Okay. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> um, hi everyone. <laughs> We're having a little bit of uh, fun lighting issues here today. So, um, you know, <laughs> don't mind about like ooh, oh there it is ghostly oh look at that i'm disappearing into the void <laughs> no it's um just trying to set up lighting today it's i don't know what the weather's like where you're at but it's like really like dreary and dank here today um so it's been hard to uh get indoor lights to be anything other than either really super shadowy or super harsh or whatnot. Um, anyway, so I uh, just wanted to share with you guys um, tonight, Thursday, uh, what is today, February 5th, <laughs> Thursday, uh, the first Thursday in February of 2020. Um, I am going to, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, interview uh, someone that I just love, like, with all my heart and soul, Garrett Duncan, who is this amazing uh, person and just absolute delight, a uh, featherweight shaman. Um, in fact, sometimes it's a little hard to talk with him because his energy is so infectious that everyone just laughs so much. He's just so happy. So, uh, um, but I, I don't know Garrett very well. Normally when I live stream with people, it's people that I know really well. I love their work. We've worked together a lot, but, um, when you meet Garrett, <laughs> those of you who don't know him yet, you'll become addicts right away of his like fun connection. So um, I want to tell you the anecdote of Garrett and the Sasquatch uh, and why it is or how he first came into my life. Um, I'm going to try to tell it quick, so I'm leaving a lot of details out. Hi, Patty. Um, so I'm going to tell you this anecdote real quick. I'm going to leave a lot of details out. Um, uh, otherwise, we'll be here a long time. But in early May of 2019, I was sitting on a mountaintop in the middle of nowhere and uh, learning from a, a shamanic elder that I know how to make my own drum. Uh, hi, Danielle. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there in May learning how to make a drum from this uh, wonderful shamanic elder. And we're having this like fabulous day in her front yard, in front of her house. It's not a large yard, even though she had acres of land on this sacred area on a mountaintop, we were in a very small contained area on a manicured uh, garden. And uh, at the end of the day, when we were packing up our cars, getting ready to go out to dinner, I could not find my eyeglasses anywhere. Now, like when I'm working close up, I take them off because they're more for distance than uh, close up. But I've had these glasses a long time. I've never lost them before. We searched for over an hour. The whole group of us could not find my glasses anywhere. And again, not a large area, an area like the size of my living room. You know, it wasn't like there was that many places it could fall. Um, so luckily I always keep my spare glasses in the car. So I had, you know, eyeglasses I could drive with. I even went and I put like a golden angel coin in her fairy garden because I thought maybe the fairies had taken it. They've sort of messed with me in the past. Um, but, and even if they hadn't taken it, they, you know, if you like do something nice for the fairies, sometimes they'll help you in exchange, but nothing, no glasses. The next morning I went by her place, spent literally like between two and three hours looking for these glasses, did not find them. I'm like, damn, they were like my favorite eyeglasses and they are gone together. Hi, Dave. Hi, Sandy. Um, who else is here? Hi. Hello, everyone. Danielle, Patty. Okay. So I go on with my life and I no longer have my favorite eyeglasses. Super sad, but life goes on. Um, 
And I, you know, maybe a squirrel carried it away or a crow, you never know. That, that was early May, the very late July, I'm with my dear friend Kmet up in um, Dover, New Hampshire. And she says, hey, do you wanna go to this shamanic uh, sound healing and drumming ceremony? I'm like, yeah, of course. So I grabbed my drum that I had made that May and um, we uh, um, went to this uh, wellness center. Anyway, a lot of weird coincidences, a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> Don't wanna drag this story on. Uh, so there were three amazing shamanic practitioners who were there, one of whom was Garrett Duncan, who was visiting New Hampshire from uh, the Denver, Colorado area, the mountains above Denver. And, um, you know, there's a large group of us. So uh, obviously there's no reason for Garrett to imprint on me in any way. I'm just one of a crowd. But somewhere when we're on a break, he said to me, oh, you work with Sasquatch. And I said, well, that's so weird that you would say that because the last year Sasquatch has been coming into my life a lot. And, um, you know, it's just a little peculiar to me. And he said, yeah, you know, you really have to stop with that attitude. Um, they're trying to get you to acknowledge them and work with them. In fact, they took something of yours. I was like, what? And he said, yes, they took something of yours um, and they're holding on to it till you acknowledge them. And I immediately knew he meant my eyeglasses. And I said, well, I think it was the fairies who took it. I love how these are like our normal conversations, right? <laughs> oh, hi, John. I am so glad you're here. Uh, so he said, no, no, you are crediting the fairies, but it was Sasquatch. That's why the fairies didn't help you get them back when you asked. I'm like, wow, this guy like sees so much. He's like so aware, that's so cool. I said, so uh, what's your advice? What do I do? And he said, uh, talk to them, acknowledge them. That's what they're waiting for. So uh, that night I'm in my room and I'm thinking, okay, there's no one to hear me. No one cares if I'm like a big old weirdo or whatever. So I uh, got aligned and I spoke to Sasquatch out loud, talked with them you know, had a little one-way conversation. And I, you know, I said, you know, I acknowledge you. I, you know, apologize for ignoring them, et cetera, et cetera. Acknowledge them, thank them for being interested in me and promise that I would give them my attention going forward and, you know, get to know them and how to like do whatever it is they want me to do. So um, the next day I hit the road early because I had to go up to like Maine and uh, Northern Maine and Canada. I was going up to work with some shamans and indigenous healers up there. So I was away from like phone and internet most of the time for two weeks. Um, it wasn't until I was getting back to civilization and I'm going like, oh my God, I had a million text messages and all of that. And there was a text message time stamped the afternoon of the day after I spoke with Sasquatch from the, you know, from the bedroom that I was staying in, it was a text from the uh, shamanic elder, the elderly person that I had made the drum with saying, hey, we found your glasses. Uh, give me your address, we'll mail them to you. So um, I texted back my address and, uh, I was on the road for a little while, so it took a while before I got back home. So right there waiting for me was an envelope with an eyeglass case and my glasses. And here they are, my favorite glasses. Ta-da! <laughs> um, but I can't wear them right now because I can't, when I, when I have them on, it makes close-up stuff look weird. So uh, it makes me a little uh, vertigo-ish. Um, anyway... My, I got my glasses and like, I've had these glasses a long time. There were a few little scratches on the lenses. And so like I was, exp and you know, like dents on the glasses. They were not, they, they were worn, well-worn, worn glasses. I was expecting them uh, to be the kind of shape you would think glasses sitting outdoors from May, June, July for nearly three months to look like. And instead when they came back to me, 
They looked pristine. They looked like they had just come out of the eyeglass store. So I called my, my friend and I was like, wow, what did you do? Did you like clean them? Did you take them? And she said, no, I wiped them on my skirt a little bit. And then, but she said, this is pretty much exactly, you know, she said she just literally wiped them on her skirt apron and put them in the thing. She said, I didn't wash them. I didn't do anything. This is how we found them. I said, where did you find them? And she said, on the log pile behind the shed. I was like, I never went anywhere near there. It's in that like a totally exposed area. And she said, yeah. And I said, and you kind of have to get through some bramble bushes to get to. And she said, that's why we found them. We were clearing the bramble bushes. And they were sitting. She found them literally like 12, 15 hours after I spoke to Sasquatch. So I'm like, okay, these are really special glasses. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so then a few more months went by and I had some questions I wanted to ask Garrett for, for my studies and growth. So I um, set up a, a, an online session with him, you know, a, a Zoom session. So uh, I came online, he came online, we're facing each other the way you guys and I are right now. And again, he doesn't remember me from anyone. Like he has imprinted on me a lot. He's got no clue who I am. Um, and there's no reason he would. So uh, he said, hi, how are you? Who are you? What can I do for you today? He's being very friendly and welcoming. And then he looked at me and he's looking over behind my shoulder here. And he said, you have a huge glowing light. Okay, again, not like this glowing light here. That's from our indoor light setup. But he said, you have a huge glowing light, like a column, like you have a being that's like 10, 20 feet behind you that's golden energy. And I went, yeah. <laughs> and he said, no, don't you understand? This being is right here. And I said, well, that's kind of normal for me. So yeah, I would be surprised if you did not see something like that. But um, you know, just do you see anything else? Do you see what kind it is? So he was looking, he's looking over my shoulder here and he says, you have a Sasquatch behind you. Uh, you know, like, you know, an impressive Sasquatch. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've been working with them ever since, you know, uh, you know, the last couple of years, more and more, but definitely since uh, you sort of reconnected me with them. And he's like, really, we did, you know, like, he didn't remember me. So we talked a little bit. And then he kind of remembered me. And then um, and the Sasquatch was there being very interactive with our time together. And then um, a few more months go by. And I uh, had the opportunity to go to Colorado for work. So I arranged with Garrett to attend uh, his Featherway intensive Featherway one and two workshop, which is amazing. For all of my Prana Shakti friends, you have got to try Featherway. It is like, it's the same resonance. It's, and so many of the techniques are the same and it is so much fun. So um, I went over there and I'm teaching workshops, meeting with clients, you know, and uh, leading events. And then on the 12-12 uh, uh, gateway, galactic gateway, I uh, channeled the librarians of the Akashic Records and Jesus. They wanted to talk about what's coming up on our planet. And you can see all that on my YouTube channel. I, I posted it all. Um, so of course, you know, we're here in an almost totally empty room. And I was sitting on a big wooden bench um, and I took off my glasses, put them down, we go through all the evening, the evening's over. I can't find my glasses anywhere. I looked and looked and looked and looked. Couldn't find them anywhere. Um, and then I realized that like maybe I left them on a counter downstairs, I, but still couldn't find them anywhere. So I'm like, oh, well, we'll find them tomorrow, I'm sure. The next day, uh, went to Garrett's workshop. And um, so cool, so much fun. So we're going around the room, introducing ourselves and, uh, you know, saying a little something about ourselves. And I said, 
uh, you know, introduced myself and I said, and Sasquatch keeps taking my eyeglasses. And then I realized like when I said that, I'm like, like it just kind of came out of my mouth without me thinking what I'm gonna say. And then I realized, oh my God, the night before I come and see Garrett, my glasses disappear again. Like obviously Sasquatch took my glasses. So I said that I'm like, oh my God, my eyeglasses, obviously Sasquatch took them again, just as a little joke. And so everyone was joking around and Garrett said, yeah, um, you know, uh, maybe I should spend more time actually acknowledging them so they don't have to go through so much effort, but they do have a great sense of humor. At that point, ding, a message came up on my cell phone from someone. Hey, Benita, I just found your eyeglasses. They were right where you were looking for them all along. Don't know how you missed them. So that was like really funny. So, you know, later we went back and got my eyeglasses. So that's Garrett. He is an amazing shaman, great sense of humor, works with uh, feather way, feathers, air energy, water energy moving energy. He is a galactic conduit. He brings very divine energy into earth. Great sense of humor, very kind, humble man, and especially considering all the skill and knowledge he has. So uh, generous with his spirit and, um, and he works with Sasquatch. So um, he speaks light languages, uh, just this week, last week, I took his online light language class with uh, some girlfriends of mine. We had a blast. Everyone who was online, whether it was their first time or they were return students, was like rattling away. We're all rattling away with light language. And, you know, I've been speaking galactic tongue, light language, whatever, you know, uh, my whole life. Um, it's just another form of channeling. It just you're channeling a language, not English, and it's like codes and energy and frequency. Um, it was interesting watching Garrett teach because every person who spoke spoke a different frequency, a different language, a different, you know, interdimensional, intergalactic. Oh, there's Garrett. Hi, Garrett. I'm talking about you. <laughs> so everyone spoke a different sort of frequency of light language. And um, Garrett was talking back to each and every one of us in the frequency, in the language that we were speaking. He was able to tell us, like to us we're making sounds and he knew exactly what he was, we were saying and he was able to tell us like what we're connecting with and all of that. So everyone else is doing all the beautiful, you know, like fun sounding light language. And I'm coming out with, are you okay? you're like like literally that like that and i'm like i don't know what i'm saying and uh one of the other students was like oh my god you're talking sasquatch i'm like of course of course <laughs> so um i like all of this is just to let you know come on and join us tonight eastern standard time at 7 30 um and I will um, post in the comment section here, Garrett's website, uh, so you guys can get to know him a little bit. He is amazing. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I mean, I don't even know what's gonna happen. Like I said, normally when I do these interviews, it's with someone that I've worked with many times. So we're used to each other. This, who knows? <laughs> we'll have a fun adventure together. when. Prana Shakti meets Featherway. Oh, I do want to tell you guys something. So like the Featherway work that Garrett taught us, um, there's this one technique where you uh, use a, a feather to help your travel go faster and smoother, like, you know, when you're riding in a car or whatnot. So uh, the last time I flew to Florida, which was um, a few weeks ago, it was kind of rough weather here and it was rough weather in Florida and it was rough weather the whole way to Florida. So I, I were sitting on the plane and the pilot comes on and said, listen, we're going to be in rough weather whole, the whole time and we're going against the wind. We're going against the airflow. 
so uh, we're going to be arriving late and it's going to be a little, you know, be ready for it to be a little rough. We'll do our best for you. So I used the technique that Garrett taught us and I filled the airplane with this giant glowing golden feather. And, um, you know, as I'm taught with Prana Shakti, I used the techniques to like set the stage, but then I allowed the energy and the divine beings that are coming through to help to sort of take over. Since certainly, you know, I'm not going to micromanage angelic intergalactic beings. Um, and like the whole plane got surrounded by angels and feathered beings. It was so beautiful. We got to our destination with like zero turbulence 20 minutes early. So yeah, thank you, Garrett. That was awesome. <laughs> Okay. So um, anyway, I'm going to get off now. I look forward to seeing you all tonight. And um, between now and then, oh, just two and a half hours from now, between now and then, I hope you're having like just a fabulously blessing filled day. Thanks. Bye.